If you live in a cool to temperate climate, then greenhouses and polytunnels are a fantastic tool to ensure that you can grow crops that love the heat, that love the sun, that love being protected from winds. And here in the Isle of Man, that fits my bill. And so I'm growing tons of different types of heat loving plants here in my greenhouse this year. And one of the things that I'm going to be doing with each of my different containers is ensuring that they have some kind of water on tap that they can essentially tap into. And one of these different techniques is this here beside me. This is a self-watering pot that I've made with mainly recycled materials from the garden. It has a reservoir of water at the bottom and you can top it up with this little tube over here. And that way this plant will never dry out, especially when it gets going and those roots are really deep. Let me show you how to make one of these. This project begins with a bit of cutting of materials. The first thing being the tubing, the plastic tubing. You want to put your tubing in the container and then kind of measure up about one to two inches. You can guesstimate it if you want and cut it there. You don't want it to be any lower than the lip of your container because you want to avoid getting potting mix and gunk into your water reservoir down below. You also need to cut the drain away material. Now I've used this material for the self-watering pot because it's already perforated on the sides. It's really strong as well, so it can hold the potting mix up from above. And I've cut these so that they come up to about a third of the way of the container. So when you're creating a water reservoir in this container or your type of container, about 25% to 30% of the container should be where the water is. The rest of it should be where the potting mix and the plants are growing. The last bit of prep work is the little pot. There's going to be some compost or potting mix in this pot and it also needs to be able to get soaking with water. And for that reason, you'll need to perforate it with a nail and plastic can split, it can break if you use just an ordinary room temperature nail. So if you find that is happening, heat the end of the nail with a lighter, make it warm to hot, and that will push through the plastic much easier. The first thing that we do is we put the perforated plant pot in the center of the container, and then we put the drain away tubing all around it. And you put in as many pieces as you can squeeze in, basically. This does nothing other than help keep the compost from falling into the water reservoir. And again, if you don't have this tubing available, you could use more plant pots. Just make sure that they're sturdier plant pots and you will have to perforate all of the sides. To prevent the water reservoir from overfilling, we need to drill a drainage hole. So put a hole in just at the top of where the drain away pipes are in, and this will allow any excess water to drain out of the pot and away from your plant. Next, we're going to line this container with fabric. And the purpose of this fabric is to keep the potting mix that we're going to put in from going into the water reservoir. And this is a geotextile fabric-y style material, but you could use other materials if you would like. The important thing is, again, just to keep the potting mix from going down into the water reservoir. And you can see that I've pushed it down here into the center pot and then pulled it around the sides here. What I'm going to do now is fill this plant pot with potting mix. This is a multi-purpose peat free mix and I'm going to cram it down into that plant pot. If you haven't gotten the gist of this idea yet, I think you'll understand it now. So underneath this fabric is a water reservoir and this container of potting mix is able to get wet because it's perforated and that wet potting mix will wick moisture up. The water gets into this pot once it's filled 
through this pipe and you want to put it in now. And I'm putting it in, in here against this handle because I've found that it's easier to kind of lean your watering can here on the handle to fill it. And you want to put it in now because if you try to get it in later, it's a bit more difficult once all the potting mix is here. And now the next step is filling this up. So I'm going to fill this up with the same potting mix, the same peat-free potting mix, multi-purpose, and I'm going to fill it up to about an inch from the top of the container. To finish, trim the fabric so that it is flush with the top of the container and it is then ready to plant in. The first one I have planted with a Manx Marvel tomato. So it's a local heritage variety of tomato. And the second one is Tigerella. It's a striped tomato. It's a little bit bigger and it's a good general all-purpose salad type. I've got string hanging down from a bamboo cane just above and I'm going to be winding the plants around this as they grow. And to actually get it started, all you do is you dig the hole for the plant and then you put the string at the bottom. That's all you need to do. You don't have to wind it around the plant at all. And then you set the plant on top, good healthy little plant and then just bury it all together. And as the plant grows and the roots develop, they'll wind around the string and keep it held down and secured. And to finish this off, I am going to water it in because this plant is not able to access the moisture compost or potting mix at the bottom. And we also need to fill all of those gaps around the roots and help it get established. So let's give it a little drink. Got my watering can here. And then after it's watered in, I'm going to start filling the reservoir here. So the water goes in through this pipe and you can see how I have the watering can leaned against this handle. And I'm just gonna fill it up until water comes out of the hole that we drilled earlier. And that tells me that it's filled up. So that's two DIY self-watering pots done and dusted. As far as how often do I fill that water reservoir, it's gonna depend on how hot it is and how much water your plants are using. So top it up regularly until you get a feel for how often. And again, the water will come out the drain hole so you will never over water your plants here. If you are applying a liquid fertilizer of some sort, I wouldn't put it in the water reservoir. It could probably contribute to it getting murky and manky and pretty disgusting. So stick with watering from the top for liquid fertilizers, or you can opt for a granule based fertilizer and work it into the potting mix as you fill it. If you've got any questions about these pots, leave me a comment down below. And if you're interested in another water saving technique that you can use in your greenhouse or out in your garden, watch my video on DIY Oyas next. There's a video just up here on the screen. Thanks so much and I will see you soon for another video here on Lovely Greens. Bye for now.